going on guys victor here with a brand new video when we talk about the greatest fighters that have ever lived inside of the ufc or in all of mixed martial arts we always talk about khabib Nurmagomedov. he is the goat he was trained by his father arguably the best mma coach in the history of russia and maybe in all of combat sports as well because the majority of the fighters that come out of dagestan that were trained by khabib's father are all killers they're all hungry individuals just like khabib Khabib Nurmagomedov, the Russian, who is at 29-0, almost eclipsing that 30-0 mark that no one's been able to do in mixed martial arts, is right there. Will he ever come back and fight inside of the octagon? We don't know. He's obviously made a promise with his mother, told her that he wanted to take one more fight, even if his father wasn't in, uh, around Kate's side, win that fight and never fight ever again. He made a promise to his mother because his dad, may his dad rest in peace, he passed away in 2020 via complications due to the coronavirus. And he also had a lot of heart problems going around. Khabib's father wasn't always the healthiest individual, which didn't contribute to his diagnosis of COVID-19, which caused him to pass away, sadly. So rest in peace to Khabib's father. But if there is one individual that can be able to beat Khabib, which is a big if, because Khabib has destroyed everybody that's been in front of him inside of that octagon, for the past 10 or so years, because Khabib has been around the scene for a very, very long time, especially in the UFC. He's defeated guys such as Dustin Poirier, Conor McGregor. He's defeated other guys such as Edson Barbosa, Michael Johnson, the, the whole nine. He's ripped apart that whole entire division. He's gone through it like Brett, like a knife through butter for, for crying out loud. It's absolutely insane. But if there's a man that can be able to beat him, it is the number three ranked lightweight in the world, Charles Oliveira do Bronx. Yes, that is the man that can be able to beat him. And the reason why, well, I'm going to tell you guys why right now. I'm going to go over a little bit of a background information on Charles Oliveira. Obviously, Charles Oliveira started BJJ at the age of 12. A couple years later, he decided to transition into mixed martial arts. He started his amateur career in 2007. He won undefeated as an amateur. And in 2008, he decided that he wanted to go pro. Obviously, during those two years, 2008 to 2010, he compiled a record of 12-0 and starting out his professional career before signing with the UFC in 2010. He made his debut in 2010 against Darren Elkins and submitted him be before the 50 seconds of, that fight, of, that, of the beginning of the fight were up. So obviously, if he was able to submit a UFC veteran and a future legend such as Darren Elkins with his first fight before 50 seconds, then this this kid has a lot of upside to him, does he not? Obviously, as he continued to fight in the UFC, he started his career out in featherweight before going up in lightweight. And as I want you guys to know, he's been doing BJJ since the age of 12. He's 31 right now. He started his UFC career when he was 21. At that time, he was one of the youngest fighters in the whole entire roster. But he was one of the most and one of the brightest Brazilians and young up-and-comers from that country coming into the UFC at that time. Mind you this, he is a third-degree black belt at this time. You don't see that many third-degree black belts in the UFC. Most of them are just first-degree black belts. But he's a third degree, which is very, very dangerous for an individual like Khabib. Obviously, as his career went on, he faced killers. When I mean killers, I mean he's faced Frankie Edgar, he's faced Jim Miller, he's faced Max Holloway, Anthony Pettis, Jeremy Stevens, Tony Ferguson, Kevin Lee. He's faced them all. Obviously, he faced the majority of those opponents when he was at featherweight. Decided that he wanted to go back, he wanted to go up in lightweight because. The weight was killing him. He's a tall and big individual for featherweight. The weight cut was affecting his health. It was affecting his performances. So he decided to make that make that jump up a weight class to the lightweight division. Obviously, it was looking good for him. He was beating a good amount of individuals until he ran into an obstacle. No one thought that he would lose to this individual, but he lost to Paul Felder. Paul Felder being one of the hugest MMA veterans in the game till this date. Obviously, Paul Felder is an extremely smart man. He does commentary for the UFC. He's an analyst for the UFC. So he's not a, he's not an individual that you should be able to look around. I think Charles Oliveira looked around Paul Felder and he paid for it dearly. As a result, he got knocked out in his own game. He was mounted by Paul Felder and Paul Felder was able to knock him out via elbows, ground and pound for the TKO finish. 
obviously, when we think about ground game, you think about Charles Oliveira being able to submit guys left and right. This man holds the record for most submission victories in the UFC with 14, and he is tied for the record of most finishes in the UFC with 16. He's tied with Cowboy Cerrone, who's been in the game for such a long time. Cowboy Cerrone has about almost 60 MMA fights in his whole entire career. More with the 60-something, I believe 70-something, 60 or 70 around there, kickboxing matches that he had before his career in MMA. So Cowboy Cerrone is just like Israel Adesanya. Has probably ha he probably has more than 100 combat sports bouts in his whole entire career. No matter what it is, MMA, kickboxing, Muay Thai, you name it. Being able to be beaten by someone like that, like Paul Felder, on the ground, obviously it wasn't good for him. But after that, he hasn't lost ever ever since that loss to Paul Felder. He hasn't lost ever since. He's beaten guys such as Jared Gordon, Kevin Lee, Tony Ferguson, all the way up to that number three ranking in the UFC lightweight division. Yes, the last guy that he beat was Tony Ferguson. Tony Ferguson was supposed to be heralded as the man that beat Khabib, as Khabib's kryptonite. Tony being so unorthodox, he moves weird. When he's on the ground, he can pretty much beat anyone with his Brazilian jiu-jitsu. His BJJ is also one of the best in the UFC. But then Tony got beat by Justin Gaethje. But then Tony got beat by Charles Oliveira. When he faced Charles Oliveira, Charles Oliveira beat him on the ground, was able to take him down, mount him, almost submitted him with an arm bar. I think Charles may have broke Tony Ferguson's arm, but Tony Ferguson being one of the toughest men in all the mixed martial arts... He didn't give up, and he didn't tap. And I think he probably broke a muscle or a ligament or artery, something in his arm, in that shoulder, because it was hyperextended to the point of no return, but he didn't tap. Charles still went on to beat him via unanimous decision. I believe it was a 30-26 all the way around on the scorecards, and that's extremely huge. Now, fast forward to today. Charles started his career with the UFC at the age of 21. Now he's 31. Holds multiple UFC records. He has a lot of performance uh, performance bonuses, whether it's for submissions, for knockouts, or for overall performances overall. He is a very individual to be watching after in the UFC. We don't know who Charles Oliveira is going to fight next. Apparently, Khabib isn't interested in anyone, but if Charles Oliveira goes out and faces maybe a Justin Gaethje, a Dustin Poirier, and completely wipes them, those two out of the map, or one of them, Khabib's interest is going to be peaked. He's going to want to come back to the UFC. He's going to want to go after that 30-0. and 0, But he wants someone to give him a challenge that's never been given to him in his whole entire career. That individual definitely has to be Charles Oliveira. Obviously, there have been individuals that have been able to block the takedowns of Khabib. There have been individuals that have been taken down by Khabib and have gotten back up and able to meet him back in the middle of that octagon. Uh, Ally Quinta has been one of them. Obviously, he took his fight against Khabib on less than 24 hours notice, and he was able to take Khabib all five rounds. He was able to box with Khabib. He was, he was able to get some shots in there, but they barely phased him whatsoever. Charles Oliveira's game has evolved so much because in the beginning, he relied, he relied majority on his BJJ because his BJJ was his bread and butter. He's been doing that ever since he's been 12, fast forward, 21 years old. Have all those years of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu on his record, being one of the most, most well-known BJJ black belts in the whole entire world. Also, in the MMA sports world, you're going to be known as a threat on the ground. So, whenever guys were on the ground with... Oliveira, he automatically basically tapped him out because his transitions from all the different mounts, from the north-south position to the side mount to the full mount to the to the regular guard itself, it's absolutely insane. He can get the arm bar finishes, he can get the guillotine, he can get the darses, he can get the, the knee bars, he can get the, the leg locks. All these different submissions, he has them all in here because of all the experience. Like I said, he's been in the UFC since... 2010 we're in 2021 that's basically 11 years of experience being inside of the UFC facing some of the largest killers that the UFC has to offer in the featherweight division and also in the lightweight division and being able to fight someone with Khabib who also has a lot of knowledge behind his back but if I were to put my money up between Khabib Sambo and Char Charles Oliveira's BJJ background I'm going to have to go with Charles Oliveira because he's going to be the only person that's not going to be scared to go in to the range of Khabib. Mostly when fighters get 
very close to Khabib Nurmagomedov, they end up getting taken down. Whenever fighters have their backs against the fence, against Khabib Nurmagomedov, when Khabib's stalking them, Khabib gets the takedown. He takes them down right next to the fence so he can unleash his ground and pound and submit them via rear naked choke, whether it's a triangle or whether it's an armbar like he did against Justin Gaethje. That won't happen against Charles Oliveira. Just, you know, hear my words out. It won't. Because Charles is Brazilian to Jiu-Jitsu background, won't let him be submitted because Charles knows all the ins and all the outs when it comes to being on the ground. He's very dangerous when he's on this back. He's very dangerous when he's on when he's on someone's back on the offensive. His BJJ defense is unheralded. It's one of the best inside of the whole entire UFC. So I guarantee you, if Khabib takes him down, he's going to be very hesitant about taking him down. And Khabib's going to fall back on his boxing since he's been very, very confident in his boxing lately. He went... He used his boxing against McGregor, rocked him. He used his boxing against Gaethje, pressured him extremely well. Charles Oliveira is going to welcome Khabib to take him down. Charles Oliveira isn't going to take, isn't going to be scared about Khabib wanting to take him down. If Khabib goes in for a double leg, Charles Oliveira is most likely going to pull in a Dars, or he's going to pull in a guillotine. So that's going to be in Khabib's mind if he wants to take him down, if he wants to use his sambo in his wrestling. It's an interesting matchup. And now that Charles Oliveira's game has developed so much over the years, his boxing is probably at around the same skill level as his BJJ. So obviously he is a complete mixed martial artist. His leg kicks to the calf and his flying knees that were all showed up against the, the fight that he had last year in Brazilia Brazil against Kevin Lee was a masterclass performance. He showed up. And he submitted Kevin Lee in the second round. I, be I believe that Kevin Lee was trying to go in for a takedown. And uh, next thing you know, I, I forget. The fight was a long time ago. But I think Kevin Lee tried going in for a takedown. And then Oliveira just slipped in that rear naked choke and submitted him. Just like that in the second round. And Oliveira barely took any damage in that fight. So that's this is pretty much all the information I have on Oliveira. Like I said, he holds... Different records inside the UFC, most submissions with 14, most finishes with 16, tied with Cowboy Cerrone. He's been in the UFC since he's been 21, he's 31 now. He's the third degree black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu since he's been doing it ever since the age of 12. He started his career all the way back in 2010, joined the UFC with a 12-0 record when he was fighting in different organizations, small-time organizations in Brazil. And it's just as I said before, he's a very experienced individual, and he's he's in his prime right now at the age of 31. He probably has a good another eight or nine years left in him before he retires, but he's one of the greatest stories in MMA right now, and I believe he is going to be the one to beat Khabib Nurmagomedov, and I hope you guys agree with me too. If you don't, then leave a comment down in the comment section, and let me know, is it going to be him? Is it going to be GSP? Is it going to be a rematch with Connor? Is it going to be a rematch with Poirier? We don't know because we don't know if he's coming back or not, but hopefully he does because we all want to see him get that 30, you know, but people like me also want to see him lose because, like I said, we don't like guys that are undefeated. It's just like Floyd, Floyd Mayweather. We all want to see him lose because we don't want to see him undefeated anymore. Same thing with Khabib sometimes, but it is what it is. I appreciate you guys. For, I appreciate all you guys for watching this video. It was a pretty excited one because I did a lot of research on Charles Oliveira, and he's a very interesting guy, so stay safe, guys. Stay blessed. And I'll see you guys later. Peace.